Hello, hello developers, and welcome back to Elixir Pro. In this video, we will be taking a look at the Phoenix chain off that Valin has been working on. I believe that this will be added in the upcoming version of Phoenix. The community has been quite excited about it, so I thought I could record a video passing through this framework. Uh, in this video, we will not be coding that much, but we will be passing through the changes that the generator did on our project. Well then, let's start after the intro. Let's start. Well, the first thing that I we're gonna be doing is create a new project. Normally, I see the tutorials related to the finishing off in a live build context, but for this video, we're just gonna be taking a look at a generic new Phoenix project. So let's type like mix pjx dot new uh, basic off. And just that is fine. So let's fetch out our dependencies and let's get back once all the dependencies have been fetched and compiled. So we're back. So let's see our project. Take off. The first thing that we're gonna be doing is like initializing our repository. So get in it, git and add dash dash all, git commit, message into commit. Okay. So let's add our dependency. So let's go to our mix.exs, mix.exs. The file that we are going to, the line that we'll be adding is this one here. So let's do a mix get to generate the authentication. Let's type just mix pjx.chain. The os. Uh, if you don't know what to put next to it, you can just run the command and the generator will suggest something for you. So let's type that. You see, it, it suggests for us to grab this line. So let's do this. Paste it. Mm -hmm. You can see that the generator, the generator create a lot of files for us and inject some things into one of the existing files, like the router, as you can see, like here, and some that and some port cases. Well, then let's do what it's being suggesting to us. So let's type like mix steps dot get. This is necessary because this has injected code in our mix dot exs. Uh, the lines that has been added are something like to buy creep and come on in if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, it, you see here it's been added by crypt and let me just buy crypt. Okay, I thought come on in would be with it. Oh, but I think it's a dependency, that's why we're probably gonna be updated. So let's run that command over there. Okay, come on in has been added. Yeah, you see here it's who has been added as well I thought, because I think this is the dependency for by crypt. Uh, so now we can like type mix ecto dot let's type reset so that we can drop our database and print all the migrations. Okay, so I think we're fine to fire up our application. So let's type ix dash as mix page x server. This will show that we have a working application. So let's go here and type almost 4000. Yep, we have a working application. You see that these two lines have been uh, injected into the template. So let's check out some of the functionality of the chain off. The first thing that we are going to be using is creating a new user. Uh, so let's create like example at gmail.com. Okay. And let me actually quit my Slack or this will be keeping appearing. <laughs> uh, the standard is like 12 characters long, the, pair, the password, let's do this right now, later we're gonna update it, so let's type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, 11, 12, so I just got back from 1, 2, 3, so let's register. Okay, we have like a successful user was created. Uh, we have the routes for logging out. Okay, so let's log out. You see, we're not more register. Let's log in once again since not, we're not going to be registering. So, example, gmail.com, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think this one was the password. Oops, I <laughs> already forgot what was the password. Yeah, it's this one. So, we're logging in once again. Uh, one nice thing that this came out of the box as well is these. Uh, is these 
forget password. Actually, first for me to forget password because I'm gonna be resetting it. Let me change the change set for our user because I don't like to put like 12 characters in passwords. So uh, actually, it's user dot ex. Yeah. So uh, we're just gonna re we're just gonna pass through everything, but I'm just gonna change this thing from 12 to six. And I'm gonna show actually the user notifier because this is something that we're gonna be reaching out very soon. So what I'm gonna be doing right now is like clicking on this forgot your password, right? And passing that email that we received, that, that I created. So it was example at gmail.com, right? And send description through that password. If we check here on the console, you can see that we got this link here. So we can grab this and then paste Let's update our new password to 123456. 123456. And we should reset the password. So that has been reset successfully. So if you try to log in right now with example at gmail.com, now 123456, it should work. Yep, we're logging in. So this uh, user notifier is something that you can use if you want to like use push or bamboo to confirm the email, reset password, and like any other functionality related to to changing the updating the user like the password email database and some other field that you might put in the upcoming migrations like maybe user type you want to change the user to to basic customer to admin or something like that but here's what where you would like to take a look at it so let's go through the files and the first file i think i want to show you is the router well, you can see like from the plus on the left that this has been like added to our router. This basic off web user off is kind of the API that our controllers are going to be using to to manipulate the session that in the current user. Uh, this last plug here is fetch control user basically uh, fetches <laughs> a user from the database and put on the assigns of the connection it, it, as long as the user exists, right? Otherwise, I think it would hot. Let's check how this thing works. So let's go to user of ex. So we had a, the function was fetch current user, right? Because this one, you see, it's a plug. It receives a connection and in the end returns a connection. So ensure that user so that user has a token. It's get it gets the token the user from the session and puts the 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 current. User. Yeah, it's just as long. As, I think it's if there is a token and. Art is gonna be returned new, or the art is gonna like put new on the current user, or it's going to put the login in user. So this is what this fetch current user does, and every time in all our connections, it's gonna pass through this plug. Just to like review, you know, a plug is a function. This basically function with arity of two that receives a connection in the first argument, and in the end returns a connection. So like this is a plug. Sure. Should be like error gift too. I don't know, maybe the plug is just a function that receives a connection and returns a connection. I'm not sure anymore if there really needs like a error gift too, but I'm pretty sure it's a it's a function that re receives a, a connection and returns a connection. Basically, we have like more plugs here, but let's take a look at it very soon. So we see that this was like the this was already in the in the basic part of our application, but the generator like put a lot of routes here at the bottom for us, and I think that's they are pretty well explained. Like this redirect if user is authenticated is basically if you try to log in once you are already logged in, it would like redirect you to the root path. Let's try that so that I can prove it to you. So you see right now that we are already logging, but if we reach the slash user slash login which is this route here, right? Since we are already logging, we should like be ready back to the, root, to the root page of our application. So let's let's go to that. Yep, you see, we were already logging, so we, we were redirected to, to this. Uh, this require authenticated basically requires that user is authenticated. Uh, you can see like both these redirect if user is authenticated and redirect authenticated user are plugs. And they are also in our user off, so let's search for those functions. So, uh, redirect if user is authenticated is the second one, right? And the user is authenticated. No, it's the first one. So, is it right? Yeah, it's the first one. So, basically, it's going to be redirect to the sign in path. 
and the other ones require authenticated user which is the one right here basically like both of these things they, uh, they check if the user is there's using the, the signs of the connection and do something related to it but in the end like uh, return the connection if, if it finds it's fine it finds that um, and again, like this is a plug, so it receives connection and returns a connection. This is a two-way function. I gotta check that if I can get if a function that here receives a connection and returns a connection with Eric of one is called a plug in the community. But later I'll check that. Okay, so let's take a look like one of the controllers, but like I'm not gonna pass through like all the controllers, let's go to the session controller so that we can go to the accounts module. So let's go to the session controller. It's, 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 it's like the, the logging part, right? It will hit the user of that login, login user. Basically, it's gonna grab like the params that we're gonna be sending from the UI, getting the user by the email and password, and then it's going to be logging. This is like from that same file that we were ago. So let's go there. In the user of, as I said, this is the API that our controllers are basically gonna be using to uh, return connections because I think it's most often made of out of plugs as long as our definition is correct. So yeah, then this first function here, basically like it's getting the token from the actually where we're, we're passing users to so generating a token and then get the session. Well, pretty much like putting uh, putting things in our in the session of our connection and renewing the session because for some fixation attacks and then redirecting it. But let's go now and go to the accounts module. Here's like all the backend part of the authentication happens. Like we have like all the, the functions that we already like get user by email, get by email and password, which is the one that we, we just saw in that session controller, get user, register user. And yeah, there's plenty other functions here like this just be uh, an overview of how the library works I think you should like go in depth and actually just pass through the eye of each of those functions they are have like pretty good names at it so that you can understand quite quite precisely what's happening actually I learned a lot by just looking at this this library uh, right now I think that for the next video I'm gonna like start coding and typing stuff at it but I want to wrap up with the two articles that I think they are very nice and the first one is like from Josephalin, which is the the, up to the announcement of this Phoenix Jane Jane off. So let's put like Phoenix Jane off. I think it's easy to find this. Uh, let's put like here dash bit. Yep. So this article here, I'm gonna put in the description down below. And actually, there was another tutorial that I'd like to, to, to pass you guys. I'm gonna search for it and put it in the description down below. But it's like a, a, a full tutorial on like putting Phoenix Dream off in a live web application, which is awesome. But most of the content that I'm gonna be recording I can, are coming from there. Of course, I'm gonna like tweak a little bit around, but yeah, that's it. I think that's something that we can also do is like use Bamboo to actually create a, a working email email provider that can actually reset our passwords and send emails. But but that's will be in the upcoming videos. Well then, hope you have enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and till next time. Bye!